What are your top takeaways from the Berkshire meeting? So I had an article up on, on fool.com that had my, my five big takeaways. I'll, I'll highlight two of them uh, here. So one of them is that there's a concern, of, you know, a, a valid concern that Berkshire has gotten too big to succeed, that the, the company has grown so much over the years, but it's so big now, and the law of large numbers is going to weigh it down. And there's a lot of truth to that. And, and frankly, when it comes to Buffett, uh, investing the billions of dollars of capital that, that Berkshire has and, and, and the companies under Ber the Berkshire umbrella churn out, it does get more difficult. Um, Buffett has actually said on a number of occasions, if I had less money to, to uh, invest, I'd have much better returns. Uh, but one of the interesting things that, that they went into at the meeting are some of the advantages that come with that size. And, you know, you think about the during the financial crisis, uh, Berkshire got some great uh, deals by lending money to Goldman Sachs, lending money to GE, and then shortly after the financial crisis, lending money to Bank of America. These are deals that nobody else is getting, and Berkshire got it because they're essentially the only one there. And the reason that they were was because they have the temperament and they have the balance sheet. And so this is one of the ways that size can actually be an advantage as opposed to a dif disadvantage to Berkshire. The other thing that jumped out at me, and there's a lot about investing at the meeting, obviously, there's a lot about Berkshire at the meeting, but then there are some things that, that Charlie and, and Warren go into that are outside that scope. And, and one of those things can certainly apply to investing, uh, but it can apply to anything that you do, and that's being a lifelong learner. Uh, somebody had asked, what are the 10, 10 books that have had the greatest impact on, on, on the two of them? And Charlie Munger's response was basically that, you know, I, I can't really think of 10 books that have been better than the next 10 or whatever. And then he said that um, his mind is such sort of an amalgam of all of the many, many, many books that he's read. And he, he said on, on other occasions just how important reading and constant learning is to him. And, and I think that that's all we can, uh, something we can all take to heart, whether we're investors or, you know, whether we're, um, I, I don't know, making semiconductors or whatever we do, just to have a love for what we do and a love for learning and, and getting better at that.